Well, hello, friends and neighbors. Johnny Whiskey Neighbor here. Welcome down the nook and the end of 2021. This will be a quick walkthrough of about eight whiskeys that stood out for me this year. These are the best whiskeys that I've reviewed on the channel this year. Now, a little stipulation, these are uh, whiskeys I've had to have a bottle, so I've had some fantastic samples, but they don't count. And it's only that I have to own them, have bought the bottle, done the review myself within the last calendar year. They could have been released eons ago. It doesn't really matter when they're released. It's only that this year I tasted them. And as always, it's just my thought. It's just my palate. Uh, my favorite may not be yours, of course. And yours, well, might not have been the strongest one for me in this category. But these ones I really do think, even if they're not your favorite, I think these stand up as quality whiskeys to think about if you haven't had one maybe in the coming year. So these will be... About the eight best whiskeys, I'll go through some Irish, some bourbon, some Scotch, some Canadian and rye. We'll see where it goes. Why don't you pour a favorite of yours? I've got probably my overall favorite in this glass. And when you come back, I'll give you the highlights and give you my thoughts on these great whiskeys that I opened and tried in 2021. Three, four. All right, thanks for coming back. Uh, so we're gonna start with an Irish that absolutely blew me away. Really no surprise. This is um, JJ Corey's Irish blend, really. These are uh, Irish brokers, what do they call them? Uh, you know, merchants that buy casks, then age, then blend them. There's all sorts of amazing things in here. 60% malt, 40% grain, but a variety of ages from, I think the youngest was maybe nine years and the oldest, was something like 28. You know, JJ Corey's The Gale, this is batch two, is probably one of the favorite Irish I've had in a long time. It's right up there, you know, with um, 12 year old Redbreast Cast Strength, or, or I, I like uh, Yellow Spot quite a bit, but this JJ Corey is by far my favorite Irish this year. Let's jump into some bourbon right away. Let's talk about my favorite bourbon of the year. Not a surprise if you're a viewer of the channel, it is still Austin. Now, you know, still Austin the Musician comes out of Texas. This is young liquid. Uh, it's only about two years. And, you know, I think it's 49, 49 and a half percent. And, you know, I will say the Musician, still Austin, is a bit of a drier bourbon. It's got a lot of good oak spices. It's got a variety of cinnamons, a little bit of clove going on in there. It's certainly not, you know, a very a fruity bourbon, but it stood out as just a really quality liquid. You can see this, uh, yeah, 49.2. This um, has just been a fantastic bourbon for me and one I'm happy to say, one of the best I tried in 2021. Now thinking bourbon, let's notch it up a bit and say, what about a barrel proof or a cast strength? Well, this is a store pick, but it really did excite me this year. And this is 1792. Um, full proof. Now this is a pick by Ryan Egan for, for Wine and Beyond. I think it's like 62.5%. So it also it could be where my palate is right now. It's also a little bit of a more of a smoldery, more of a spicy bourbon. But the fruit that I do get on here is a really interesting, uh, almost a cooked orange or darker citrus in with some of the other classic bourbon fruits. Yeah, there's a little bit of apple, a little bit of cherry, but but you know, really interesting uh, where this bourbon went and stands out to me as my, my bourbon cast strength uh, of the year. Let's go over to Scotchland. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of great scotches, but I hope you know on the channel, like everything up here, except for one bottle, is under 100 Canadian. Like that's, that's a really good value, right? Like, like I really try to buy in that 40 to $80 Canadian range if I can. So anyways, coming back to scotch, this scotch I've had before, but I reviewed for the first time on the channel this year. And my scotch, just, just go to a scotch and find one that excites my palate, was this Kregalaki 13. You know, uh, Kregalaki, I, I can't tell. I know it does say right on there, non-chill filtered, love that. 46%, still loving that. Doesn't say if it's natural color, and I really wish it would. I've heard both. Either way, it's a very light color. It doesn't look like they're trying to fool us with the coloring. And there's something about the, you know, there's a fruitiness in here, but the fruit is a little bit weird. Not weird, but like, like, um, like, uh, uh, not quite mango, but somewhere in that edge of tropical. 
And then there's a nice smoke jar in here that, you know, I, I think is it their worm tubs? Is it the, uh, is it the, uh, you know, drying of their, their, uh, their grain, their barley, of course, over uh, a little bit of diesel fuel. I don't know what it is, but there's something kind of funky about this age stamp 46 percent i can still get this for you know between 50 and 60 dollars canadian and that just stands out as a great value and certainly a great scotch now as i'm in scotch territory let's talk again cask or full proof or something like a bigger scotch and for me my palate sometimes is really chased after deep heavy phenols and lots of smokes looking for an isla but in this case, I've really gone more toward, you know, wine finish or sherries. And so my uh, scotch um, cast strength pick of the year is this Tamdu batch strength. Now, this is batch five, um, and I think it's 58. No, 59.8. And, you know, Tamdu, uh, I haven't had a lot. I've had their 10, loved it. And I've had this. It's pretty much all I've had for Tamdu. I think the bottle is, is great. I think it's a really good looking bottle. Um, but it certainly has been a wonderful full sherry. Now, thankfully, I'm not too sensitive to sulfur notes. So uh, thankfully for me, harder when I'm giving out recommendations because some of these full sherry drams can be on that edge of that, you know, that copper sulfur note that people don't like. I'm not that sensitive to it. In this case, I didn't get that here, but this is a full, you know, old leathered, old wood, prune sherry for me just really like this as a full sherry full strength scotch all right we've already done you know our nice buttery fruity irish we've gone through some drier wood spicy bourbons we've done some fruit and funky scotch now we've got full sherry scotch here let's move into let's do an international you know i don't have that many international whiskeys i don't I got the odd Japanese I got the odd uh, uh, Swedish I got you know a few different ones and in this case um, I really appreciated this millstone um, this is the uh, Oloroso sherry again 46 but this I know is natural colored non-chill filtered and this Dutch single malt is just fantastic now this is the full kind of um, um, ex not explosive but but sherry that you're going to find in even simple drams like the Sexton or, or uh, Bushmills uh, Black, Black Bush, like you get a very aromatic sherry. And I get that in here, but it is thicker, a little more chocolates, a little bit more espresso. You can see my palate kind of did a lot of sherry this year. And, and this one is just a must have. Love that one as my international pick. Now we'll go into Canadian. Um, my Canadian of the year, and this actually is the only bottle, as I said, more than $100 Canadian. But it just stood out. This is, um, you know, J.P. Weiser's 22-year-old uh, port finish. And so what I get out of this bottle is, um, in some ways, similar to the Gale over here in that it's sort of a honeyed, buttered, sweeter maple syrup. Like, I can tell that's the essence of this. This is not over oak by any means. Like even though it's 22 years old, it's clearly spent a lot of that time in um, arrested barrels, I might say, or maybe I'm wrong, but that's how it tastes to me. Um, but then the port just puts a really well, a drier wine finish for me on it. And I love the fruiting notes. I love the way that that just sings with that. And no complaints on that is my Canadian of the year that I had for the first time this year. Uh, now, oh, this is a category that I struggled with. Uh, if you're a longtime viewer, you know I appreciate rye. And I had three ryes in the running for my rye of the year. Absolutely. Uh, they were uh, Pike Creek, uh, because I, uh, not Pike Creek, Pikesville. <laughs> I'm sorry. American rye, you know, 110 proof or, or 55%. Uh, and it's not, it, it's, it's, it's very tasty, a little bourbon esque for me, but it's, it's a really full flavored. Only six years old, but you know, a good ride. And then there was the unique lot 40 peated cask. Like that's cool. And I really like that whiskey. It's a little far from rye when I'm thinking category picks, right? So didn't quite hug me the way I wanted it to. So in the end, I went with another batch of what I picked a couple years ago for my rye of the year. So two years ago, I picked batch one of the Alberta Premium Ryan. This is their batch three. So, you know, this one's 63.7%. Uh, 
um, and really, really catches my interest. Oh, I didn't tell you what the other one I'm running. It doesn't matter. This um, is really a, a true rye, not, I suggest, a very grassy herbal rye. So I think it will have a little more appeal into strong bourbon drinkers. Um, and it holds up, of course, at, you know, 60, what did I say? 63.7, I think, yeah. Like it, it takes water well, it sits well on ice, uh, blows away cocktails if you want a spirit driven cocktail, because obviously it, it's, it's a bit of a monster. Um, but I just, in the end, thought for an overall, all around rye that I can do so much with, it just became my, my rye pick of the year. These are the eight that I said, I'll give you a bonus. Um, and that would be sort of a distiller of the year or a style of the year that really caught my attention. And, and I'd shot this particular bottle recently, and this is from Boulder Spirits. You know, in my market, a number of, you know, unique bourbons, very, um, their bourbon is, is, is significantly higher in uh, malt, right? It's got that barley malt kind of nutty flavors going on. And then they've done that bourbon sherried cask, which is really a great one. This is a single pick from Yeg Whiskey Nights. What a great guy, 58.8%. Uh, and just, just to share with you, you know, that this distillery as a unique or something a bit different, right? Because this is an American single malt. It's got that number three char virgin oak. Uh, Sean corrected me that this one's four years old, not the two that it says on the back label in my defense. Um, but this is certainly um, a category of spirits that I think is worth checking out American single malt. So I'll put it up here as my, as my plus one. So these are the whiskeys that really are exceptional for me. Whiskies that are actually all affordable, except for the 22 year old here. They're all, like I said, under hundred. Uh, some of them well under hundred, like the, the, the least one up here is actually this Craig Alke for me. Get it for just over 50, which is a great deal still. Um, but I would stand behind the quality of any of these. I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love for you to share with me, you know, what some of your picks are, put them down in the comments. Um, you know, 2021 was another challenging year for all of us as we work through the different waves in COVID and how that affects our families and our work. But it has been wonderful to be able to come here, share some thoughts with you guys, just relax for a moment. And, uh, and I truly appreciate everyone who's reached out. Uh, for those of you that said samples, cheers. You are awesome, awesome folk. And but this still is for just uh, throw a word or a comment. I just really appreciate you. What's in my glass as probably my favorite of the year? Well, it's right in front of me. This Tamdu batch five cast strength stood out as just so good, so rich, so thick, so uh, warms me to my toes scotch. I hope you found some good whiskey like that. Love to hear your picks. And here's to some more great whiskey in 2022. Slancha, good health to all of you.